Right, so you can see these uh, gentlemen in front of you, they said it's Father's Day, and I thought, about what's the best way of doing it? And yes, I can speak from my experience as a father, that, a father, but uh, I, I reckon mine is still quite limited. I've got years and lots of mileage to still uh, be a father. And, uh, but one thing I've learned is that fatherhood, you never stop until, I guess, when you die. Because your kids, no matter what age they are, and those who are much older than me, you have all the kids, will be able to testify to that. Your kids are always going to be your kids, and you're always going to be their father. And um, so, I, you know, I know that the mistakes that I've made, I can perfect them in as I go along the line of being my father to my kids. So I've asked um, Edmund and Rami and Tony and Clive uh, to, to just share their experiences. I've got a set of questions for them. Um, so as I go through the scriptures, you can see them on the screen. You didn't have to memorize them, just in case you thought you had to. Um, one thing though, Edmund is not a father, okay? Not a physical father, but he's definitely a father to many people, especially from people from Ghana, who recognize him as a father and have given him the title of father. So I can ask you to, when he answers this question, from that aspect of living a, a father image, and um, to speak to us about it. So guys, thank you for agreeing. Yeah, no, I had a choice. But uh, <laughs> thank you for saying yes, now for this. So we're going to go straight into that. If your microphone doesn't work, then you just um, use the one that, that uh, Ronnie has. But I basically um, based my questions to these guys on scripture. And the first question that I wanted to know from you guys, and we'll literally go down the line, is um, in light of Exodus chapter 20, verse 12, which says, Honor your father and mother so that you may live long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. One of the things that I can say is that that word honor in the Hebrew is more than just honor, so it says, it says kaved. And kaved is also weight. So it's not only on, on honoring, but weight. And why, why is the weight? Because the children are requested to, in honoring the father and mother, uh, to take the weight, the responsibility of the father, to share that responsibility. That's the way in the scriptures in the Old Testament, that's the way the Jewish people understood um, honoring is sharing in that responsibility. So in light of the scripture, uh, would you share your understanding of it and just your experience? And Adam will start with you. It's not working. Okay. I think we might have to... There we go. Get the speakers loud and listen to more play. Good morning, family. I'm Edmund. Uh, my face is very familiar to almost everybody here. I've met probably who visited uh, this church this morning. Uh, I grew up in Ghana before I came down to South Africa. And my father, still alive and kicking getting to 90 years, was a school principal. And my mom was a school teacher. And in those days, in the Presbyterian church, discipline was a theme that was not taken lightly. And so I can actually recall how we lived at home. My father was that authority figure, the school principal, and later on as an elder in the church. And he brought us up in that manner. And the, the commandment number five in mind, honor thy father and thy mother. And this tradition is very, very clear that your days may be long in this world that the Lord has created in us. And 
And so we lived strictly according to that. Uh, we dared not disobey our parents. I don't remember any time that I could stand up to my father and ask him why he asked me to do something or not to do something. It was as simple as that, straightforward. When you are, we were told to do something, we just had to do it. We couldn't question authority. And uh, we assisted in the house in all the chores that were assigned. Somehow I realized that, especially when I left home and I went to the boarding school, the high school, I was very young at that time, 12 years, and I found life a bit challenging because I had been brought up in this environment where I was not allowed to question authority. And then you get to the high school, and there are all these people who ask you to do a lot of things that actually you are not supposed to, you know that it is not right for you to do. But then, because of my upbringing, there was that kind of debate in me. But then, that is how it was. In the boarding school, it was the same thing. Anybody about you was your senior, and you dared not disobey what the senior said. I think that aspect of life uh, helped me to adjust to that life in the high school as well. We had a very happy upbringing. Our dad loved us. In fact, we didn't even call him dad. We had a name that we used for him. We called him Butterfly. Because his friends called him Butterfly. We didn't know why, but he allowed us as children also to call him Butterfly. It was a very warm atmosphere at home, and that was how I grew up yeah. with that mentality that the Bible has commanded me. It's not a request, it's a command that I should obey. Thank you, Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for, for that. Right, Ronnie, what would you say to the first question? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, um, guys, it's it's uh, like Edmund says, um, times have changed, um, and I'm sure they've changed from when you were kids, uh, talking to the older generation. But the the fact remains, um, when you are put in charge of something, you have a responsibility. Um, and as a father figure, you have a responsibility of bringing up your family, of being in charge. And I don't mean like being in charge of making all the decisions, but I mean being a responsible person in charge. So things go wrong, yours is the responsibility. So with my dad, it was a case that he had a responsibility of bringing up the family and it was my responsibility to support him um, in doing whatever he requested me to do or anything along those lines, um, supporting him um, in any way that I could. And that is the same as it is in the Bible where God is our Father and we should be doing everything to support him um, in his ways and bring up our family in, in his name. Thank you. Thank you. Morning, everyone. I feel that uh, as we have a godly father, as we have the fathers, we need to bring up our children in the way that God wants us to, and to guide them and protect them, and to always be there for them. That's my father to me. Okay, thank you. Yes, um, God is our Father. He said He will protect us and provide for us. And we as fathers got to do the same for our families. And 
And I believe that if you start with the Ten Commandments and honor those commandments, your family will go ahead and be one of the better families. I'm not saying that anyone's family is worse than others, but will live through life with strength, kindness, and love. And your father, no two children are the same. If you must, you must change with each child and take them forward. And then, then again, teach your children that your wife is very, very important in your family. Okay. Okay. Even Dave is going to start with you in the next one. But um, yeah, very much so. Uh, thank you guys for that. You know, one of the things that we need to also remember as fathers and, and mothers for that, that matter is a legacy. We touched a little bit on that. Uh, the legacy that we're leaving behind. And as you were saying, that the promise there is train, uh, you know, in, in, in um, Exodus is that your name will be forever or your life will be forever because that is your legacy. Okay? How many of you, you mentioned something about your dad, you mentioned about your dad, and so on and so on. How many of us remember what our dads were like? And I think one of the biggest things for us as fathers in a changing world is to leave a legacy so that your kids will say, you know, my dad or my father did that. And, and to leave a legacy of who we are as children of, of God, who is our, our father. So, very important for us to, to know. Okay, we're going to go into the second question, which is now in the New Testament. Uh, so, in the last Ephesians chapter 6, verse 4, it says, Fathers, do not exasperate your children. Instead, bring them up in the training and instruction of the Lord. And the word exasperate is literally the prodding. You know when you, when you prod someone and you say stop it, stop it, stop it, then you just carry on prodding? That, that's what that word is, okay? Do not exasperate your children. Instead, bring them up, training, instruction of the Lord. The understanding of the people in those days, uh, as you sort of think about the question, was that when you could hear as a grandfather, so this is now going back generation, as a grandfather, if you could hear your son, because it was a patriarchal society, if you could hear your grandson being able to recite the Ten Commandments, which we just looked at, if you were able to hear your grandson recite the Ten Commandments of our heart, then the idea was that you could easily go and die now, because you know that your legacy was passed to the rest. So the question in, in, in Ephesians, where Paul is asking us in Ephesians, asking the church, asking the fathers, is do not exasperate your children. Instead, bring them up in the training and instruction of the Lord. So in light of this, um, Clark, what do you, how do you understand it, or what would you like to share with us? Well, from my father, he was a role model to me. And I asked my son, just last night, what he thinks, and he said, you are still my role model. He's in Bumutang, he's a lawyer, so he's got lots to say, <laughs> and he says, I am still his role model. And the, the main thing is, all children are different, and you cannot upset one child to make the other one, or push the one child. You must except that they are going to be different, you're going to have to train them in a different way and talk to them in a different way in life. And if you can pray and bring the Lord into your house, He will help you in bringing them up to how you would like to see your children. Don't try to force your child, if you play springback rugby, give me a springback rugby player. It might not be, it might be a hockey player. And you've got to then push where his assets or where his uh, uh, strength is. And goes back to again, love your wife. I know that no matter what you say to your children, they will do what, what you, you have done. Not, they, they've forgotten what you told them. But when I say to my daughter, you're driving dad, she 
He says, if you don't need it. Big by examples, hey. Big by examples. Big Yeah, it's unfortunately my father was not a very good role model for me. Uh, he was an alcoholic and we didn't have much of a life together. So as a father, I've tried to improve on that and be a good role model to my kids. Bringing Jesus into our home, into our home. Praying together, reading the Bible together and trying to be an overall good role model to my kids. And uh, just this morning being Father's Day, I've got one or two gifts and uh, was again told that I am a good role model to them. So I appreciate that with God's help. Great, right. thanks for coming. Right, uh, yeah, um, well, I'm going to be very honest here. Um, I do not pray with my family. I do not do things like that. I should be doing it. I know I shouldn't. I'm sorry, I know I should. Um, but I have not been doing it. But I do my best. Um, we've never been a family where we have sat around and gathered and prayed. Um, we've, we've never done that. But I still believe that I had a very good mother and father. Um, we, they did their best. They did very well as far as I'm concerned. And uh, all I can do is do my best. And, and like Clive said, kids won't do what you tell them to do. They'll do as you do. So they learn by seeing and not by doing. Um, or oh, sorry, they, they learn by doing and seeing. But not by hearing necessarily. So I have to brush up and I, I have to come to the party and, and start doing things like that. But um, I'm doing my best. and. That, that is what I have to do, bring them up in instruction and, and training. But um, if I think about a step down, where I still think of my dad and mom a lot. And uh, sorry if I'm weak. <laughs> but um, I, I think of them a lot, and I still remember the things that they did. Uh, and to me, that is what is important. Um, that you can do it in godly ways, not necessarily through only praying and things. But what you do is also just busy. We better say in the same that it's not necessarily praying together. We better say in our home that God eavesdrops into our conversation. And uh, you know, we, we our thing at home is for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And I believe as you your you and your house serves the Lord, God eavesdrops into your conversation. And uh, yeah, and not all of them. Well, sometimes you even say to God, don't eavesdrop into that one. <laughs> this one is private. Uh, but yeah, there is sometimes living in light of, uh, of, of what the Lord has commanded us to be uh, is a life of prayer. Is a life of prayer. Anyway. Yes, the role of the Father actually is also one that is tied to authority. I learned from what we read from the commandment. This authority must be exercised with love. The fact that one is a father and the fact that one has authority over the household does not necessarily mean that the father must impose himself on the children or on the family. And so that is how it is that we should not exasperate to whatever authority we exercise it must be done with a spirit of understanding empathy knowing that these are children and that as children we don't expect their behavior to measure up to what we actually expect so it is something that is very very important where i work in my department uh, I assist students with their academic writing. There are other departments that assist students who have emotional and uh, other issues. But quite surprisingly, sometimes I end up, when students come to me with their assignments, we end up discussing the whole of issues which don't fall under our commandments. Is because when I ask them to go to those other departments, they tell me that no, that when we get there, they don't have any patience for us. They don't seem to understand our story. They don't even seem to be interested mm. in what we're going through. And so, in a way, I think at a certain point, I realized that I might have been treading on certain toes.
souls because I would have to take the students inside and push them to various places where they could assess those assistants that we needed. And so that is how it is. That we should exercise that role of authority that mm -hmm. would love with understanding and with empathy. Correct. Thank you. All right, next question. Keep it there. So we'll then start with you. Uh, next uh, scripture. Is that any scripture? All right. So in light of Ephesians 5 25, it says, Husbands, love your wife just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. It's important in that scripture to note what did Christ do for the church, the church being his bride, and what we as husbands should be doing for our wives. The, the problem with that scripture is that there's one uh, verse before that is, it says, wives submit to your husband. And that's where the wives go. <laughs> uh, I, I love using that scripture when I do weddings because there's such a misunderstanding of the submissiveness of a wife. Uh, we automatically think that the wife should say, yes, darling, no, darling. Uh, as a matter of fact, not, never say no, darling, but yes, darling, yes, darling. And um, that's what the submission is about. The submission that Paul is talking about actually comes from a military term of being over and against in line. And he's actually using the description of the way he used to fight in those days, which was a cascade type of formation. You had the guys with the spears, then you had the guys with the shields, and then you had the guys with the bow and arrow. And if any one of the soldiers were out of submission to the other, in other words, they were not aligned to each other, that was a weak point for the enemy to get in. And Paul, by telling the wives to submit to the husband, is asking that you have that unity. And those of you of us who have children know how easy it is for a child to go to their mom and say, Mommy, can I have this? And the mom said no, and then it goes to the dad, not knowing what mom said, then they will most likely say yes or the other way around. And it's so important for husband and wife to be in that submission. Saying that, the husband to love your wife. How did Christ love his church? He died for his church. So in light of this scripture, just as Paul's this explanation that I gave you, um, of why do you think it is important to love your wife as Christ loved the church when it comes to family life and children? Amen. Yes, in fact, uh, there must be, as you have already explained, uh, that level of understanding between the wife and the husband. You see, unfortunately, we find ourselves in a patriarchal society where things are made to look like the man should always uh, have uh, his desires or his authority obeyed and uh, without any question, which is not actually the case. Mm. It shouldn't be the case actually. And that it is our responsibility as husbands to show our wives how dear they are without them. Because we decided to be married in the first place. We knew that we couldn't go out. We needed partners to make life happy for us. And so when we got to those partners, we must show them that now. The thing is, the children that will come up later on will look at what obtains in the family and learn from what is actually there are cases, and uh, it's recorded in literature, where a child turns out to be exactly what the father has been. Mm -hmm. The kind of treatment that the man gives to the wife is, in most cases, the same treatment that the son will also give to the wife. Mm -hmm. And so it's very, very important that husbands display this high level of not 
simply because he loved you, but also as a way of showing the children how they should behave and when they grow up. I know a family, and uh, it's a family friend, it's a Ghanaian family. Their daughter is more than 45 years, and you don't talk about marriage to their daughter. It's because of how the daughter saw the mother being treated by the dad mm. when she was still a child growing up. She has never thought about marriage. Mm. You sit her down and tell her about marriage, and she doesn't want to have anything to do. And so our actions are both the love that we display towards the wife and all the children go a long way in molding. Um, again, it's, it's the leading by example. Um, you you treat your your wife like you would like your kids to treat their wives, um, and you learn by looking at your family and how they treat the you know the, the, your dad treat your mom, and um, it, it is very important because the father needs to support the, the mother, the husband needs to support the wife, um, just as God supported the churches. Um, he would have done anything for the churches. Um, he cleared out the people in the church when they did their own things, um, as, as must be our uh, part. Um, if we see our kids or anyone behaving incorrectly towards our wives, we must step in. Um, that is our role as fathers. Thank you. Okay. Uh, as Ron said, you need to become one with the church, as, as God did with the church, you need to become one with your wife and support her in everything that she does, as she needs to support you. And uh, my wife's mother does like you want, she's got a husband that washes dishes and helps <laughs> make beds and all sorts of things. So yes, we or put it as one in our own soul. Great, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, we also lucky that we also got a dishwasher that's never been used. I wash the dishes. I don't know why, but um, God loves us and wants us to love our lives. And it's easy to say when one of the children came to me and asked me for something, I'd say, what did your mother say? Because then I could tune with her. Yeah. But, uh, they did catch me up a couple of times. <laughs> <laughs> but the Lord wants your house to be a loving house. And I don't know, I've just seen it in my own life. People that, uh, men that beat their wives, unfortunately, runs in the family. Of the, the children think that's the way they can do it too. And it's, that's just my own observation, no one else's, but it, it's, they don't realize that those children are watching you all the time. They're not listening to you, but they're watching you. And God disciplines you too. Make no mistake. And you must discipline your children. And if you and your wife can be one, Makes it very much easier in the house. All right, great, thank you. And in closing, basically, just your last words to the congregation, to anyone who's going to be listening on the live streaming. What would you say fatherhood means to you? Not being a father, but fatherhood means to you. I got married when I was 30, and only had kids when I was 35, so I was a little bit older. And it's brought out something in me that I never knew I had in me. I, although I come from a family of five boys, no sisters, and um, maybe that way, my father always said, the way you talk to a woman is the way you really treat your woman. And I love my kids dearly. I don't want to show it. But I'm just one of those that holds things inside that I realize that I brought my kids up right. 
if I look around me and discipline is one of the main things. Discipline, love, kindness and understanding. That's the main thing to do. Great, thanks. Penny, how would you, uh, what would you say Father who means to you? Father to me mainly firstly means having a loving wife to support me and the family. The privilege of bringing children into this world and uh, nurturing them and bringing them up in the ways of the Lord, standing by them, supporting them in everything that they do, and uh, just living together lovingly as a family. Great, thank you. Marvel Comics um, summed it up beautifully. With great power comes great responsibility. Uh, being a father is an incredible thing. Um, but with that incredible thing comes a huge responsibility. So for me, fatherhood is a great responsibility um, where you have to leave uh, a child or children behind that you can be proud of. Mm. Uh, I think I will start by saying that fatherhood to me is a divine responsibility. The unfortunate part of it is the fact that many people, fathers, don't seem to acknowledge this fact. The fact that we brought a child into the world is one thing. Being a father to that child is another thing. And so, there is that divine, that spiritual aspect of fatherhood that society currently has tended to, I don't know whether they were not aware or they were aware, but they have ignored the problem. And once a person embraces that responsibility, then it helps that father to charge the way for a very good leadership Impact positively on society. Okay. Absolutely, it's a calling, isn't it? I can leave there. It's a calling. To be fatherhood is a calling, as you said, but also the fact that I don't have to be perfect. I don't have to be perfect, and I'm not perfect. Um, he makes me perfect. The, Jesus, the Lord Jesus Christ makes me perfect. But also the fact that I'm not alone. I'm not alone. Um, you know, in my culture, the culture I grew up with, in the Jewish culture, there is a huge understanding that men are not alone, women are not alone. It's very much a community um, upbringing. And so many times I recall my father, we were going to go to the synagogue, myself, my father, my grandfather, and on the way back we would walk, because you're not allowed to drive in Israel on a Friday night, we would walk. Um, to our home and my mom and the rest of the ladies would get everything ready for the Shabbat meal and I would hear my dad asking the older men advice you know about, about me oh, he's so naughty and you know and all this to me, he doesn't listen to me and you know and, and when, I, when, I, when I disciplined my, my son I, I reminded of of my dad walking with other men asking for advice because my dad was a very young young father to three of us at the age of 27 he had already three kids um, and, and it was so important for me to know as a father that I'm not perfect and I can always ask for help uh, because I said some of you guys who have a lot of mileage as fathers on the me and it's good for me to know that I can pick up the phone and say hey what am I such a young? How do I handle so and so and so and so? I find myself in our bowels that they often ask, I was asking the advice from the other guys and uh, saying, you know, what must I do with Ben? What must I do with a teenager all of a sudden in our home? You know, she rewrote wrote the book on disciplining your child and I'm waiting for Ben to rewrite that book again. Um, but I've never, I know I'm never alone. My father, my own father's passed away. My grandfather's have passed away. So it's good to know that in Christ we are also united. And for me, Father.
father who is knowing that and knowing that I'm not perfect. So yeah, great. Guys, thank you very much. Um, wasn't too bad, eh? Yeah, we know you know what it feels like being in front every Sunday. I know I make it look easy, but it's not. <laughs> so thank you very much and may the Lord continue to bless you guys in the wonderful work as fathers that you do. And the rest of the fathers, may you have a blessed um, Father's Day. Uh, I know some of you have been uh, spoiled, you have already been spoiled. Uh, and just know that I feel the Lord is saying to you, to, to you guys uh, and to the rest of the fathers, my good and faithful servants, in whom he is well pleased. And what a privilege for us as fathers to call him our father and know that we are his children. And he is our perfect example of what it is to be a father. Right, so with that being said, if, uh, we can just stand the rest of the congregation and then I can just pronounce the benediction. And then after that, please don't run away. Um, help yourself with some nice eats, spread and share. Um, you can say your uh, proud goodbyes to the Trollops and then to Esther. And uh, wish them all the best. Let's receive the benediction. Je mag het gevel aan de naam de Ishmaelen, waar je hem kunt aanbrengen, de hitten en de mensen op. Met de Lord bless you and keep you, may he shine his face upon you, may he grant you his peace now and forevermore, in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a blessed week.